Hi there, my name is Alistair Kennedy and I'm the Sociable Social Worker and I give practical advice to social workers and those wanting to foster and adopt. In this video, we're going to look at becoming a carer and how you get to become a foster carer or an adoptive carer. And stay tuned if you're a social worker because there's lots of hints and tips in this video too. Okay, let's get on with it. Top tip number one. Understand the differences between fostering and adoption. Now, I'm not going to talk a lot about fostering and the different types of fostering. That's probably for another video. But fostering in general is you look after a child from a local authority or refer to you from an agency and you care for them short term, longer term, permanently. You don't have parental rights for these children, but sometimes you can have what's called delegated authority. That's for another video as well. Adoption you have parental rights over that child. And you went through an assessment process and through the court process. And I'm not gonna go into that in detail either because it'll take too long for just such a short video. But crucially, that child is yours. So those are the differences in quite a short space of time between fostering and adoption. And it'll be useful for you to know them because what you need to be clear with an assessor is are you looking to foster or are you looking to adopt? And you need to think about it very clearly because the two are very, very different. And also, if you're looking to adopt a wee baby, well, we don't tend to get many wee babies anymore. And if you're looking to foster, the average age is about three years, 10 months. And that's roughly about the same age as children are adopted in the UK. There are about 4,000 children waiting to be adopted and about 2,000 adopters waiting in the wings. So it's quite a competitive process. But in this video, I'll give you some top tips as well and how to get through, which the first part of the journey is your initial visit. So the first part of your fostering or adoption journey is the initial visit. That's when the social worker will come to your house and see what your house is like and see what you're like. And you've probably phoned them up and you've been really nervous. It's a really nerve wracking experience and the social worker's nervous as well. They want to see you succeed and they know that they've got children waiting in the wings to be placed with such a nice family like you. So well done for thinking of fostering or thinking of adopting. It's the first part of your journey is the initial visit. So top tip number two, be yourself. Don't try to be anybody you're not. The social worker is going to spend an awful lot of time with you in the initial visit and then further down the line doing the assessment so they'll know all the ins and outs of your life. So just try to be your normal family life. Tip number three, clean, clean and clean some more. You'll find that when the social worker arrives to do their initial visit, they'll probably use the toilet. And we always go and use the toilet, probably because we need it, but because <laughs> we've driven a long way. But also, if a toilet is clean, it gives you an indication of how the house is going to look and the rest of the house and the general cleanliness. So clean, 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 especially that toilet. Top tip number four, don't do anything fancy. Don't bake any cakes, don't have any special teas out. Don't repaint the house, don't buy a new sofa, don't buy new furniture. Crucially, don't do anything to potentially a foster child or an adoptive child's room because you really want the child to be involved in doing the room up. And also, you don't know what you're going to be approved for. You could be approved for siblings, you could be approved for single child. You just don't know at this precise moment. Also, another good tip is, is make sure that your front door isn't covered in sticky fingers, that there's not dead plants everywhere. The front door makes an excellent first impression to a social worker because if they come up to a lovely front door that's probably been freshly painted, which would help, then they say, well, great, one, the, the house, I'm looking forward to seeing what's in the house. Top tip number five, smile. So when you open the door, smile. Give the social worker a big beaming smile because she'll remember that, he or she'll remember that smile and they'll think, yeah, do you know what, that'll be really good for a child. They're really warm and a nice warm greeting when they come to the door. And the child will remember that too. And my last tip, know why you're doing it. Why do you want to foster? Why do you want to adopt? Don't just say, I want to make a difference because everybody says that and it drives social workers bonkers. Be very clear why you want to foster or why you want to adopt. As I said before, the two are very different. And if your initial visit's late at night, don't make the social worker wait in their car for you coming home. They've got their own family life as well and they want to get home because that's precious to them as well. So don't be disrespectful. Their time is really as important as your time. So there you are, some top tips about fostering and adoption and also about your initial visit. And I'm gonna have two other videos, as I said, one is video number two, which will be about the assessment process for fostering and adoption. And video three is gonna be about 
the panel process, so the final stage. Now there might be a video for, I've not quite figured out what that would be, but if you want to leave any comments below, then please do and let me know if you want another video. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe, press the subscribe button and I'll see you all again.